let's say I have an intrinsic semiconductor. So I have a intrinsic semiconductor. And what that means is that I have the semiconductor and this is the conduction band, this is the valence band. And I've added no dopants to it. I have not added any donors or acceptor atoms. And then I want to find out so how many number of electrons are there in this intrinsic semiconductor and how many number of holes are there in this intrinsic semiconductor. And I can give both of them a subscript I indicating that these are for the case when the semiconductor is intrinsic. So let's think about it, you know, are the number of electrons and holes equal? So there'll be electrons here in the conduction band and correspondingly there'll be holes in the valence band. So the important point to keep in mind is that we have not added any dopants or acceptor atoms. So every time an electron moves from the valence band to the conduction band, it creates a hole. And similarly, every time this hole is created, there's a corresponding electron in the conduction band. So we know that the number of electrons in an intrinsic semiconductor should be equal to the number of holes in an intrinsic semiconductor. So let's find out how many of these intrin how many of these electrons and holes are there in this in this intrinsic semiconductor. So we can use some of the equations we derived um, in the previous videos. So we derived that the number of electrons is uh, given by this formula where it's related to the effective density of states in the conduction band and it's given and it's related by this exponential function which says that uh, it's essentially has this dependence where where it uh, varies exponentially depending upon where my fermi level is located with respect to my conduction band so it's given by this formula similarly we know that the number of holes is given by a similar looking formula where the number of holes is related to the effective density of states in the valence band. So this is the effective density of states in the conduction band and NV is the effective density of states in the valence band. And again, it's dependent on this uh, exponential. Uh, it has this exponential dependence, but now it depends upon how far my Fermi level is from my valence band. So it's given by this, this, this dependence. Now, what I'm interested in is, is finding out how many number of these electrons are holes are there when I have an intrinsic semiconductor. So when I have an intrinsic, intrinsic semiconductor, this n should be equal to ni, and this p should be equal to pi. And I know that both of them are equal, so ni and pi are equal. So what I can do is I can multiply these two equations. So I can multiply this equation and multiply both the left hand and right hand side. So I get Ni times Pi, which is equal to Ni square, since Ni and Pi are equal. And this is equal to Nc, that is effective density of states in the con conduction band, multiplied by effective density of states in the valence band, and then the sum of exponents. So let's gather these when we multiply exponents we add up the coefficients so let's let's collect all the coefficients so i get ec minus ef and then from here i get plus ef and minus ev and the whole thing is divided by kt so now again uh, I have a positive EF and I have a negative EF, so these two terms cancel out. Also, I know that EC minus EV is same as the band gap, so EC minus EV is equal to the band gap. So I can replace this whole thing by, by, by the band gap. Okay, so I get a much smaller simplified equation over here. And now I have n i square. If I need to calculate n i, I need to take a square root over here. So what I get, my final equation is n i is equal to the square root. Let me write it in green. Square root of the multiplication of effective density of states uh, in the conduction and valence band. 
and then that's the most important thing how does it depend upon the band gap and the temperature which is given by this dependence let me write eg in yellow eg and if i take a square root of this i'll get i'll multiply by my exponent by half so I get eg by 2kt so this is a very important formula and this is a very profound formula because it's it's telling me how these uh, number of electrons and holes in my intrinsic semiconductor how do they vary as a function of my band gap and as a function of my temperature so what this equation is telling me is uh, let me graph this so you know and i how does it vary as a function of band gap and how does it vary as a function of temperature so over here what this equation is telling me is that if i increase my band gap if i increase my band gap then i I make this exponential term more negative or I'll reduce the value of this exponent term. So it's telling me that if I increase my band gap, then the number of number of electrons and correspondingly the number of holes in my intrinsic semiconductor is decreasing and it's decreasing exponentially. And if I think about it, what, what I'm doing if I'm in if I'm increasing my band gap, that is if I have these two semiconductor, one with a lower band gap and one with a higher band gap so if i'm increasing the band gap i am increasing the barriers for these 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 electrons in the valence band to jump over here and create go to the conduction band and correspondingly they'll create a hole in the valence band but when i have a low band gap i have a decreased barrier for these electrons in the valence band to jump over from here and become conduction electron and correspondingly they'll create a hole over here so this kind of makes sense if i increase the band gap i am increasing these barriers for uh, increasing the barrier for these uh, valence electrons to jump over here and become conduction electrons so the number of electrons and correspondingly the number of holes in my conduction and valence band should decrease so this kind of makes sense now let's also make some intuition around what will happen if I if I increase the temperature. So according to this equation, so according to this equation, if I increase my temperature, if I increase my temperature, then I'm reducing this exponential term. So you know if I increase the temperature over here, the temperature is in this denominator of this exponential term. So as I increase that, I'm reducing this uh, exponential term, which has a negative uh, negative power. So if I increase my temperature, I'm increasing my number of electrons and holes. And let's see, you know, let's let's build some intuition whether it makes sense or not. So what I'm doing if I'm increasing the temperature is I'm giving these uh, these electrons in the valence shell enough or you know giving them higher energy so that they can more easily now jump over to the conduction band. So it kind of makes sense that if I increase the temperature the number of electrons and holes in an intrinsic semiconductor should increase. So now, now let's put this intuition into some uh, and you know into some practice and let, let's look at some actual numbers. So if we this plotted over here is the intrinsic uh, carrier density that you observe uh, uh, for different semiconductor germanium silicon uh, gallium arsenide gallium phosphide and as a function of temperature and I'm varying the temperature from 0 Kelvin all the way to you know up to 1200 Kelvin or even higher so the first thing I notice is that if I'm increasing my band gap, so I know that uh, germanium has lower band gap than silicon, which has lower band gap than gallium arsenide, which has lower band gap than gallium phosphide. So if I'm increasing the band gap, as I'm increasing the band gap, I observe that for a given temperature, let's say a temperature of 400 Kelvin, as I'm increasing the band gap, I'm decreasing my intrinsic carrier density, as we just talked about. 
not. So it's the data validates our intuition and the equation. Also, if I look at what's happening for a given semiconductor as I increase the temperature. So I see that as I increase the temperature, as I'm increasing the temperature, this uh, intrinsic carrier density is increasing because I'm reducing or I'm giving these valence electrons enough energy to create more of these 